Right, I'm going to use the proline brush, which when it's dryish, it bounces back. It's got a good bounce anyway. You can see with it goes back to its point. And I'm going to work in this area, try and to merge the blue and the yellowy colours. I know they're not quite yellow, but uh, I've chosen to use the raw umber. So I'm going to put that in again. If, of course, I wanted to make that a tiny bit warmer with adding the red, I would get a burnt sienna. Can you see that? In? And I can put that slightly warmer, keeping it pale. But if I want to make it greyer, I can bring in, uh, that's from left from before, I'll bring in the blue, the ultramarine. Take that in. And I've got a sort of grey, browny grey. It's going to take and that's for this area here so now what I want to be careful of is that I don't let that dry so I'm just going to wet this area because I'm not using the big wash brush I'm not absolutely soaking the area so there's the tree going in softened off that's where the blue is going to be. I can go over this now because of the uh, masking fluid is dried. And I can put a bit of this browny colour in here for the tree. Clean my brush and just soften it off. Take it down into here. So that's me more or less Clean brush again, got the area of the sky sorted out. So I'll mix up the blue and just clean that up a bit. I want quite a bright blue. I've got the choice whether I want to go in my photocopy. It looks quite a warm blue. So I'm going to go with ultramarine. And I'm just I've got three, I've gone to it three times to try and get the intensity of colour. Check what it's doing. It's quite dark. It's going to get paled down when I go onto this slightly darker, uh, slightly damper uh, paper. So it's going to run in between. Now, I can lift some of that off. I'm so busy following what I'm doing and you probably find the same thing. It's getting paler and paler as it gets wetter. So we're going to go in here and round the top. Pick up some more. We're back at the top again, so it's a bit darker. And then come down. You could, of course, if you find that it's drying off too quickly, there's nothing to stop you wetting it a little bit more or carrying on using the squirrel brush. Oh, I seem to have forgotten a bit. You can always paint round it because it's drying off already. I'm going to make this blue paler. Just took a little bit more water on my brush and go in. I quite like that. I'm going to leave that, maybe bring it round in here. And peel her again and come down through here. Right, you can squeeze your brush out or just blot it and take it soften areas if you don't want, if it's not joining the way you want it to. So that you're not putting any more water into it. You can soften that area off. I can... No, I'm just going to leave that at that. So I can come straight down now that that area is sorted out. I've got the sky, I've got the background trees, which seem to have disappeared there. But, you know, I'm just going to leave that. 
I'm going to go in with this brush here, slightly darker. So I've got my, and it's browns. You know, even although we made up greys with this mixture, because I've got the red, I can carry on. You might find that you print when you look at the monitor or your printed copy, that it's not the same as the one I'm using because my printer doesn't do the same. My monitor doesn't look the same. So I'm going to make up that burnt sienna colour, but I'm going to grey it down with a bit of the ultramarine. So if I make up two mixtures of this and then I take what's on my brush and I bring it together, I think I will be able to, well, that's still damp. It's a wee bit too brown. I'm going to go back in, put a bit more blue in. Because things get greyer as they go into the distance and paler. So I might actually mix up a slightly paler mix. And if I want to be more delicate, I would change over to a smaller brush. At the moment, I've got eights and tens out, but I think I might even take a, a rigger. Make sure it's clean. It's got a bit of blue on it, but I could feel that when I went like that, it felt a bit dry. And I'll just soften this bit. And just blend it in together. And where it's dry, it'll make different marks from where it's wet. There it's a bit warmer, so I can pick up and it comes in next to there. If that is where I want it to be paler, I just take a clean brush, dry it off and I can blend that together there. See, did you see what I did then? I didn't. I, I blotted it. I actually just squeezed it with my finger and I, and that leaves it nice and pale in that area where the tree comes up so that it looks as though it's got somewhere to go to. This will all dry later. Right, and we'll come down. I've just picked up some of this stronger colour because it'll show up nicely these these light bushes and I'm getting warmer as I come forward. I'll just take that in through the back. So there's a shadow coming in there. But this is warmer here, so I'll just finish that off. Could do with being a bit darker. So because it's you're keeping too much the same colours, you don't have the problem of which colour will I use? But if you want to follow the greens and greys, you can do, and I'll show you how to do that. I'm going to, I've just added more water to make it much paler because I want it to be quite pale. If it's too much, dab it off and just take it into the distance. There's still light coming through there so I can lift out a little bit and it follows the path. We'll sort that later. There's an awful lot you can sort later. You just, I'm not, it's, this isn't, oh, too much blue. Want a bit more red in it. It's going to go purple. And a bit of the yellow will make it grey. We're coming down and you notice that this is starting to look quite yellow now which it didn't when I first put on. I'm keeping this grey back here it's quite soft it follows and I will put the tree on top of it so there we go and now I need a different colour coming down here. That was pale. 
I've got the choice of putting the shadows on first and putting the colour on top or putting the colour down first and then putting the shadows on top. You assume that it would be one or the other, but it works both ways, but it's different. So let's put in the shadows. And load up with brush. And you see, you could try the different way. I'm running out of paint. You could try putting the colour down first and then the shadows. Or do one bit one way and one bit another. Which is usually what I do. Right, I'm making up the purple again. Quite blue, but a bit more. I'm making it stronger. And then I'm taking a bit of the yellow just to grey it down. So that's the order. Mostly blue, a bit of red because it's quite strong as well. And a little bit of yellow. And we'll go back in. And do you see how that's much purplier? But when I put some another colour on top, it won't look quite so... And you see this is nice. This is showing up these grasses but I don't want to do too much there yet so if we want a little bit of green in it there's nothing to stop you just taking I've got some sap green there take it into the blue but I don't want it quite as take the purple and then mix in a bit of yellow Ooh, I've got some there. But it gives... Why I'm not so keen on actually bringing that green in is it's, it is very dark. But I might keep that till later for the tree trunks, for the darkest bit. I'll take a bit from my brush and put it over here and mix more of that burnt sienna colour which is the red and the yellow together with a little bit of that mixture. I know it gets, it sounds as though it's quite complicated but because I'm only using the three and then introducing that other one which does the, the green, sap green, which does make everything quite a lot darker you are you you are still keeping to quite a, a small amount of colours and it doesn't really matter if you feel that you can put it down and say oh that's okay it's dark enough for going through there it'll go up that tree trunk but I want that to dry and you know there might be darker bits that we need to put in but Let's just leave that. I'm whittering on just now because I'm tr waiting for this to dry so that I can put the burnt sienna colour on for the background of the... But I realise, I mean, I could easily just take, I've got burnt sienna hidden behind there, it's sticking. <laughs> but I'm going to stick with the raw umber and the red and mix up my burnt sienna colour from that. So I'm going to take a bit of red. Now this is much, it's redder and bluer. It, so if I pull in some of this blue, I'm getting closer, but I want it to be rich and it's too orangey. So I'm going to take a bit more red into it and maybe a wee bit more blue and you don't have to mix the whole lot together and I might just need I'll keep that and that brush but I'm going to take wet a dampen down a brush and take this paler mixture for back here I need to make remember to leave that high lip there so I'm going to no, it's not bright enough, so we'll go and and 
and take a bit of that. And now I'll go, oh, there's some, so I'm trying to link up bits. I can make it a wee bit brighter, the red and the yellow. And right, and we'll go back and see what I had on the other brush, which was quite dark. So maybe actually this being darker here, it's not red enough, but let's see what happens anyway. Go back with the other brush that had the paler colour on and take it over here. And I've dried it off again and I just, I want that to be hazy. So this is still wettish here, but I think I better finish this off. So we'll go back. It'll dry paler, but let's get this on before. So watch what happens when I go over this. And you have to keep, you can't muck around with it too much. There we go. And the green again. I would normally maybe wait for a little bit longer, but I've just taken, can you see that? You see that green? And it's quite pale. I'm going to put it there. So I'm just going to go over. Put little bits in here, little bits there. And you see, as I'm going, it's picking up some of the brown, which means I can just pop it into there so it doesn't look quite so strange. And as long as I don't have my brushes loaded with paint at this point, I can carry on darkening bits down. I've still got that dark blue-green that I mixed up. And I can drop in little bits. I can drop in behind there, drop in behind. That's a nice bit. It's not maybe in there, but because I've got masking there, I'm going to put the darker bits behind the masking. Load it up again. Get it darker. And I, I can't, I might have to go in with the really dark bits later, but there we go. There, yeah, we've got that there. I'm not sure about that, but we can maybe change that later. Right, soften that. That's still wet. So I can start putting in. This has got quite a good point. So I can go over. Right, there's another tree behind there, but I'm going to miss that out. There's other ones here. So, decide what colour the tree is going to be. This is that slightly greeny blue mixture and I'm going to bring some red into it and I'm going to try and stick to dark colours. I have to put out some more. That's purple. You see that? It's a sort of purpley blue and it's not maybe going to be what I want for that. I don't, so I'm just going to take it into there, the yellow, which makes it a much softer colour. Take my rigger, because I want to do points, that's wetting it down even further. And I'm going to do some, just to get the feel of where I want things to be. And then make a slightly browner mixture. too brown so take it back into the blue I was nearly <laughs> going to paint on the the picture and I'm not going to go over all the same ones those paler grey ones are going to be the ones that are further back further away from me and these slightly browner ones will come 
So I need to go back over here. I'm sort of just showing the process rather than... Now I want them to be greyer again in the distance. So I'm going to go with that slightly purpley thing. And remember, I can't... I'm just going to smudge it in. Something there. This always seems to go on an awful lot longer than you feel it should do. Right, I'm going to not do too much there. I might do a bit more just hinting at it, at something being there. Go into the yellow, well, the raw umber. And I'm just going to, it's quite hard with the plate being there. Just going to take it in there. It'll dry out. I don't want to lose all my, my blue showing through. Now, the next thing is to get this tree in. So I've got this these darker colours on my brush on this one. So I might, might need to mix up more of it. So I'll, I'll stick with the ultramarine. I've not used the cerulean or Prussian blue, is it? Right, so start out with blue because this side of the tree away, although it's you think it might be a brown tree and the light's warm, it's not really. So I'm going to go for making the purple up and just, you see, I've not mixed it all together. And do you, you see demonstrations, they just go in and mix the whole thing. And I don't know how they get the colour. I've to, I've got to keep it so separate so that I I know what I'm doing. And there's the yellow coming in, which might be useful in places. I am going to wet the area that I'm going to paint into. Right, I'm just going to go up one. I'm going to take this. And you see, I've got this uh, raw sienna down. If I put the colour over the top, I get a rough idea of what it's going to look like over the raw sienna. So hopefully this is dry. We're going to come in here. Maybe make that a little bit stronger. And drop it in. And decide where I'm going to go with this. All right, I'd wet that there. It's <laughs> you know. It's when you start changing your mind, it's not the best idea. But, well, that's come out there. I think I might have actually not put the... But I'll show you what to do. If I want more light, more yellow there, I'm going to bring that up quickly. And I'm going to change the colour. I'm going to go into more brownie colours. And I can drop in. Can I make this a bit bigger? Bring it down. Dab it in. Maybe make this a wee bit bigger here. But because it's wet, you can keep, see I've, I've left masking there, so I'm going to bring that across and if you hold it quite far away from the brush end, might have been better without it, but it's there and I've got it in, so let's go there. 
and there. Right, I'm going to go back in with just the yellow ochre and I'm going to bring a little bit down here and I'm going to go in and it's strong. I might I might leave that actually until but I'm trying to tie the tree up with the rest of the painting. But I've still got to take the masking fluid off. So I'm going to let that dry and then have another look at it. I can put the rest of the branches in later.